Jane Mansfield was a legendary Hollywood bombshell known for her seductive looks, bubbly personality, and scandalous personal life. However, her fame and beauty were not enough to shield her from the harsh realities of mortality. At the tender age of 34, the world was stunned when news of her untimely death broke out. In this article, we will explore the tragic events that led to the demise of one of the most iconic figures of the silver screen. From the highs of her dazzling career to the lows of her personal struggles, this is the story of how Jane Mansfield's life came to an abrupt end, leaving behind a legacy that continues to captivate the world to this day. Vera Jane Palmer, later known as Jane Mansfield, was born on April 19, 1933, in Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania. She grew up in a family of four with her parents, Herbert and Vera Palmer. Her father was a lawyer, while her mother was a school teacher who left her profession to raise a family. When Jane was six years old, her mother remarried and the family moved to Dallas, Texas. From a young age, Jane was fascinated with Hollywood movies and stars. She idolized Shirley Temple and collected Hollywood fan magazines. As she grew older, Marilyn Monroe became her new inspiration. When Jane was 17, she met and married 21-year-old Paul Mansfield in Fort Worth, Texas. Soon after, in November, they welcomed their daughter Jane Marie. Paul served in the Army during the Korean War while Jane pursued her dreams of becoming an actress. Both of them performed in various little theater productions in Dallas during the early 1950s. Jane Mansfield and her husband Paul moved to Hollywood in 1954 with hopes of making her dream of becoming a movie star a reality. Despite doing numerous screen tests, no studio would sign her. To make ends meet, Jane sold candy at a local theater and did part-time modeling work for the agency where Marilyn Monroe started her career. Finally, on October 21, 1954, Jane got her first successful acting assignment when she appeared on television in the Lux Theater production of An Angel Went AWOL. This led to her first film role in The Female Jungle. Excited about her newfound success, Jane began to promote herself aggressively, adopting the color of pink as her signature. She decorated her home in pink, drove pink cars, and wore pink clothes for the publicity she received from the color. In January 1955, Jane attended a press junket in Silver Springs, Florida, promoting the film Underwater, which also starred Jane Russell. In a movie that shocked the press corps, Jane wore a swimsuit that was too small and her top fell off during the event. This incident generated a lot of publicity and Warner Brothers subsequently offered Jane a contract. Jane Mansfield's career took off in the mid-1950s, but her personal life was a different story. Her marriage to Paul Mansfield fell apart during this time, leading to their separation and divorce in 1956. Despite this setback, Jane continued to pursue her dream of becoming a movie star. She signed with Warner Brothers in 1955, but was only given small roles in films such as Illegal, Pete Kelly's Blues, and Hell on Frisco Bay. There were rumors that she would appear with James Dean in Rebel Without a Cause, but her contract with Warner Brothers was abruptly terminated and that opportunity vanished. Jane's luck turned around when she landed a larger role in the independent film, The Burglar. Her agent also encouraged her to audition for the lead in the Broadway play, Will Success Spoil Rock Hunter? Jane's exaggerated portrayal of a dom blonde movie star won over the play's director, and she landed the lead. Her performance in the play earned her critical acclaim and awards in 1956. Jane's performance in the play also led to a media frenzy, and her sex kitten persona became a household name in America. She appeared in about 2,500 newspaper photographs between September 1956 and May 1957, and had about 122,000 lines of newspaper copy written about her during this time. Jane also made appearances on popular New York-based television shows such as What's My Line, Person to Person, and Sunday Spectacular. Once 20th Century Fox caught wind of Jane Mansfield's rise in fame, they signed her in 1957 with the hopes of making her their new Marilyn Monroe. This was during a time when Monroe was refusing to make movies unless she was given better pay and treatment from the studio. Mansfield's initial roles for 20th Century Fox were in two comedies where she played the classic dumb blonde, The Girl Can't Help It, and the film version of Will Success Spoil Rock Hunter. 
But the studio had bigger plans for Mansfield, casting her in a dramatic role for the movie adaptation of John Steinbeck's novel, The Wayward Bus. Despite this shift in her career, Mansfield continued to be a center of attention for the press and made numerous appearances on popular television variety shows. In January 1958, Mansfield married former Mr. Universe Mickey Hargitay in Palos Verdes, California. However, this marriage did not sit well with 20th Century Fox as the studio preferred their leading ladies to be unmarried sex symbols. Nonetheless, Mansfield's star continued to rise with her receiving several most promising awards for her performances on Broadway and on the big screen. Once Jane Mansfield married former Mr. Universe Mickey Hargitay, their careers skyrocketed. They began performing together in Las Vegas, becoming a famous publicity and performing team. Their audience was often more interested in seeing them together than in their actual performances. Mansfield and Hargitay appeared in nightclub acts from 1958 to 1961, dressed in skimpy costumes that highlighted Mansfield's curvaceous figure and Hargitay's muscular physique. Despite her skill as a master publicist, Mansfield found herself the subject of negative publicity in 1958 when she and Hargitay claimed they couldn't afford to pay child support payments to Hargitay's first wife. The press had a field day reporting that the couple had just purchased a $76,000 mansion and spent $75,000 to remodel it, suggesting they were far from broke. In 1959, 20th Century Fox stopped seeing Mansfield as star material and loaned her out to low-budget English and Italian movies. Despite this setback, Mansfield remained a popular guest on television, appearing in dramatic roles, game shows, and talk shows. Jane Mansfield's career started to suffer in the early 1960s as she faced ongoing marital issues and divorce with her husband, Mickey Hargitay, as well as public altercations with her third husband, Matt Simber. The constant negative publicity led to her receiving bad press from 1962 to 1964. As a result of her personal struggles, her career began to hit rock bottom, with two announced movies never made and her performance in two plays receiving critical panning in 1965. However, she rebounded in 1966 with roles in two low-budget American films, The Fat Spy and The Las Vegas Hillbillies, and performed in her last major nightclub appearance at the Latin Quarter. She spent much of the year touring small towns performing in the play Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. In 1967, Jane Mansfield's career continued to decline as she made lesser appearances on television talk shows. However, she spent two months touring South Vietnam and entertaining the troops, which helped boost her morale. Despite this, her personal life continued to be tumultuous, with her fourth marriage to attorney Sam Brody involving physical abuse and a series of lawsuits. Jane Mansfield's life came to an end at 2.25 a.m. on June 29, 1967. She was only 34 years old when she was killed instantly in a freak car accident 30 miles outside of New Orleans. Mansfield was traveling in a car that slammed into the rear of a semi-truck in a white cloud of fog produced by City of New Orleans mosquito spraying equipment. The accident was so severe that Mansfield was decapitated on impact. Despite never being a major box office draw, Jane Mansfield remained a pop culture icon because of the massive amounts of publicity she generated. She was known for her image as a well-endowed Hollywood sex kitten and the public's fascination with her gruesome and untimely death. Throughout her life, Mansfield was married four times and had five children. Although her work was rarely lauded by the critics, she did fulfill her childhood dream of achieving fame. Now the legendary Jane Mansfield life has come to a close, but her legacy remains as a symbol of an era in Hollywood that continues to captivate and inspire. Goodbye, legendary Jane Mansfield.